Uh, all right, let's get this shit show on the road. Johnny I listen to f- Seriously, I'm fucking <laughs> doing the intro. <laughs> Hello, Cinephiles, and welcome to Silver Screen Sips, a podcast where two idiots talk about movies. And today we are talking about Rocky Two. Uh, just a reminder that there are spoilers ahead for movies and TV shows that you may not have seen yet. So please do not sue us. You've been warned. You can't sue us. You can? You can't. Oh, you can't. Ha. Freedom of speech, baby. Baby. All right. We do not have a guest today. So uh, Isaiah and I are unhinged and uncontained. Ooh. I don't like that. That sounds wrong. I don't. Yeah, you're right. I don't like it either. Uncontained <laughs> sounded a little weird. All right. So we're going to obviously we do not have a guest today. So we are going to just jump right into this week in Hollywood. We're going to start off strong here. OK, uh-huh. we've got updates on the writers and actors strike. OK, now the writers and the studios are set to get back around the negotiating table. The WGA has been on strike since May 2nd. That's insane. I did not think it was that long. And on August 11th, there was an initial counter offer from the AMPTP to which the WGA offered counter proposals. And then on August 22nd, after a supposedly tense meeting by CEOs with WGA, the AMPTP released details of that offer in an ultimately unsuccessful attempt to go around guild leadership to members. Dirty. We will see um, what happens, I guess, with this upcoming negotiation. Maybe it'll be the end, but I highly doubt it. People are greedy. The studios are greedy. What? You're telling me the guy who made $2 billion last year, he doesn't, he wants to make $3 billion and he's mad about that? That someone can't pay their rent? That made him that doesn't $2 sound right. Wow. That wow. can't be true. That's too hard to believe. My God. Anyways, Isaiah, why don't you continue with the next headline? Speaking of the strike, we fought on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there have also been several fun drives set up for organizations offering support to film and TV crews. The latest Good. venture involves an auction featuring all kinds of interesting opportunities to hang with cast members from different shows and includes bids on memorabilia as well. You could win a dinner with Bob Odenkirk from Better Call Saul and his old Mr. Show co-star, David Gross. Creative consulting, creative consultation? What the hell is Consultation? That Sorry, I can't read. He's homeschooled. Creative consultations with Maggie Gyllenhaal and Spike Jones, Or even, if you live in LA, have Adam Scott walk your dog. These are insane. <laughs> How much do you think that they go for? Actually, you know what? Is there a way to look it up? Hold on, we need to find this. I want to know how much money I willingly could spend on this. Willingly. It's on eBay? I doubt that. It's a, it says, okay, hire Adam Scott to walk your dog or Natasha Leone for crossword help. What? <laughs> oh, I found it. It's on eBay. I'm not even kidding. It's on eBay. That's weird. All right, let's hear some, here's some good ones, okay? Here we go. Yeah, Natasha Leone can help you solve New York Times Sunday crossword for only $4,550, guys. Um, Bob Odenkirk and David Cross dinner for 10,000. Okay. This one, Lena Dunham will paint a mural in your home for $5,100. Okay. Interesting. There is a Harley Quinn poster signed by Haley Gilko for $1,175. Huh. Adam Scott walks your dog for an hour for only $2,500. Dude, these are, I mean, these are very expensive, but it's kind of hilarious. It exists. Yeah. It exists. It's out there. Oh, my God. The cast of Bob's Burgers will sing a song written just for you. That sounds right up your alley. $7,000. Oh, OK. Not up your alley. <laughs> Hold on. ten ninety shipping. So $7,010.90. So is it going to cost $10 to fly them out here or ship them to you? Is that what this is? I think it means ship. Yeah. <laughs> ship the audio to me via, via email. Hmm. Okay. OK, well, those are the those are the big ones. That's really funny. Anyways, back to uh, back to the podcast. But yeah, you guys can find that on eBay if you really want to go look for yourselves and if you want to go auction. Um, let's move on. So Chris Pine has directed his first movie ever, and it's deeming to be pretty dismal for the actor. The film is titled Pool Man, and the first reviews are already coming in. It is the actor's career worst Rotten Tomato score with a whopping 11% on the tomato meter. 
Despite only nine reviews so far, the low initial score is likely to seal the fate of Pool Man as a poorly received film. I have not watched the trailer for this, um, so I don't even know like what it is about. But you know what? Let's throw it in the show notes. Can we throw that in the show notes, Isaiah? Pool Man. Pool Man. I don't even think a trailer is dropped for it. Let's see. All up. We have a, we have an update. It's at 23% now. <laughs> it's at 23? Oh, man. This just in. It's probably gone up, too, since the episodes come out. But <laughs> you're correct. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there is no, there are no trailers out right as of right now. So just early screenings, I guess, for critics. But the critics aren't liking it. Yikes. They aren't liking it. Anyway. Anyways. Uh, there are some things that are possible happening to the Star Wars Disney Plus series focusing on the younger days of Lando Calrissian. As portrayed by Donald Glover in Solo, a Star Wars mo- a story, reportedly it isn't going to be a series anymore, but it's actually being turned into a movie instead. Doesn't bode well because I think the last time they did that, it didn't work out so well. Mm-hmm. Um, Lucasfilm has not officially confirmed this yet, but both Variety and Deadline have company sources saying it's happening. So now we wait and see. And with the strikes in place, nothing's really going to happen anyway until yeah. that gets solved out. So really, really, <sighs> what it sounds like to me with that is that they didn't finish writing the the TV show and decided, you know what, maybe we can put this into a make this into a movie with what we already have, which means that. Disney trying to make money off, it's going to suck because they're going to try to Frankenstein something together without having to pay the rent. I'm going to be totally honest. Do we even need a Lando movie or show at all? Like, he's like a D tier character in Star Wars, in my opinion. Oh, I have struck a nerve. (laughs) Whoops. You like him? I mean, you might have struck a nerve with somebody else. Oh, but we don't talk about the solo movie because. No, we don't. That does not exist. Mm-hmm. Like, that was enough Lando for me. Like, the original Star Wars series and his character in Solo, that's enough. I don't need his backstory. I don't really care for his character. Not that he's a bad character. He's just there. At this point, it's more about how did the Millennium Falcon... What's the history of the Millennium Falcon? That's what I want to know. I think that's probably what they'll do, too, is kind of like his story with it. Now, listen up. All you 90s and early 2000s kids. Oh boy. This one is for you guys. The new and upcoming. Okay, well, hold on. Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> so, You're the out. new and upcoming Trolls 3 movie, hear me out, uh-huh. has released its trailer and has revealed that the soundtrack includes a rather important song. The official trailer gives a sneak peek of NSYNC's new song, Better Place, which will be released as a single on September 29th. Now, it's the band's first song in 21 years. I was only I was only two years old when their last song came out. Oh my god! Which is weird. I'm so old. Yeah. Uh, so Trolls Th- Three will be in theaters November 17th of this year. Um, so anyone, I mean, I'm not personally an Instinct fan, but those who are, um, you got something to look forward to. I just need to see Justin Timberlake in his frosted tips once again. Yes. If we could bring back that, that would be great. He can bring sexy back. He can also bring the frosted tips back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now for our final headline today Drew Barrymore is facing some backlash from the writer's strike specifically from writers and uh, some guild members her talk, because Uh-oh. her talk show Drew, the Drew Barrymore show is returning to CBS Mm-mm. though sag has said that she isn't gonna she is technically in compliance with the union and she's not breaking any rules and that's what her plan is to be uh, she is returning as a host and not a writer or an actress therefore she's kind of you know okay However, uh, she will be returning. The show will be returning without writers, because the writers are in the union, making it a union show. Therefore, the writers cannot work on the show. So, not sure. So how, how do they come up? Yeah, how do you do that? I guess she's just gonna wing it. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so she did apologize to members of the guild, and uh, because she obviously faced a lot of backlash. Um, oh yeah. But she did, and she stated in response that this is bigger than me, and therefore, and there are other people's jobs on the line because it does have a large crew. However, a lot of, I think her head writer, the head her head writer, that that there were other ways for her to return with and to support the people that aren't writers and actors and stuff on the show. Yeah. But this probably wasn't the best way to do it, especially since you know the whole point of the union strikes and all of that stuff is to give fair pay to everybody, you know, so that other people don't get screwed over. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, her, including Jennifer Hudson and Bill Hader, not Bill Hader. Um, what's the other guy? He's a, some HBO uh, talk show. They're all coming back without writers, I guess, at the current at the current moment. Anyway, yeah, Drew Barrymore, you crossing the picket line? Question mark. 
You crazy goon. Anyways, that concludes this week in Hollywood. You can find all of our sources cited on our Discord channel. All righty then. Isaiah? Yeah. We're going to do it again. We're, you're going to present us Big Lou's Big Bruce Damn. with Lewis's drink. And then I will introduce our sponsor's drink of the day. What do you got? All right. Coming to us from Westward Restaurants. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the Apollo's Creed. And the little quote that we've got here says, I love plain Greek yogurt and honey. That's it. I'm not saying anything more. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holcomb says, who I believe is the uh, creator of this drink. Holcomb, his love is that of that combination led him to think about how he could work such a unique ingredient into a drink. He combined a teaspoon of it with lemon juice, apple flavored vodka, ginger liqueur, and a honey caramel syrup and called the concoction Apollo's Creed. I don't know why. <laughs> My boss was a little bit skeptical about Greek yogurt in a, in a cocktail. I had never seen it in a cocktail and neither had he. It was a pleasant surprise because once we put it in the menu, it started out selling every other cocktail. <laughs> in fact, Beatrice and Woodsley sell twice as many Apollo's Creed's as many as any other drink in the, me- in the menu. And here is how we're going to make it. Okay. It's going to be three fourths ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice, an ounce mm. of honey chamomile syrup, three fourths ounce of absolute oriental apple vodka, Ooh. one ounce of Smirnoff pure vodka, half an ounce of Domaine de Canton ginger liqueur. Ooh, I can't get any higher than that. <laughs> One teaspoon plain of Greek yogurt. <laughs> Ew, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to shake and strain all these ingredients into a cocktail glass and garnish with a lemon peel. Uh, okay. I don't know. What are we thinking? I don't know. What do you think? I'd give it a shot. Like, I think it'd be pretty good. I'm going to give it like, yeah, I'm going to give it a four out of five. I don't know how the yogurt is going to fit into it, but I'll give it a shot. Okay. I think I might give it a four and a half. Four and a half. It sounds, yeah, it sounds really good. And yeah, that like the Greek yogurt's really throwing me off. Like that's weird, but it's only a teaspoon, which is not a lot. And I'm feeling a little risky today. I kind of want to, I just want to experiment. <laughs> so give it a four and a half. It sounds delicious. Like everything in there mm, sounds amazing other than the Greek yogurt. Like lemon, honey, apple, pear, 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 um, the ginger liqueur. Like it just, it all sounds like it, it just sounds delish. Delish. Yeah. So four and a half out of five. Good one, Lewis. That was a uh, much better than the last one with the fucking egg. <laughs> that was rough. Just because Rocky did it doesn't mean you got to. Rocky is his own entity. We can never compete with him. Um, all right. Let's move on to our sponsors drink uh, today. Now. Before we jump into the drink, I would like to take a moment to thank today. Thank today. Thank today. All right. I think my drink's kicking in. Thank the day. <laughs> I would like, I would like to thank today. It was a great day. I would like to thank the sponsor of today's episode and the sponsor of our podcast, Shaker and Spoon. It's a monthly subscription service that gives you bar quality recipes and ingredients designed by award winning mixologists. Now, their latest box, Miscalloween 3. A shocker in a waka box. I think that's right. Features amazing cocktails for tequila lovers with a spooky twist. We'll be reviewing the drinks from the Speakeasy box, which was their last box this season. So if you'd like your very own box to drink along with us, or if you'd like to try out the new Halloween themed one, then head over to shakerandspoon.com and use our promo code SIPS10 to get $10 off your first subscription. That is promo code SIPS10, S-I-P-S-10 to get $10 off. Now, with that being said, let's get into the drink, which I'm drinking right now. Um, And if you can't tell, it's got me in a good mood. So it's good. All right. And this time I have an actual little story behind it. So it's it's going to be a a better than the last one. So this drink is called the bathtub old fashioned. Okay. Also, I want to state this is what the little story says. A kitchen sink in the bathtub. Yeah. Back in the day, that's exactly what you'd find people throwing at their homemade gin to mask the taste of such a shabbily concocted spirit, whether it was the spices, juniper oil, or glycerin mixed with grain alcohol in the production phase or in the resulting cocktails, which also took the hat on a hat approach to tamp down any bits of harshness that may remain. Luckily, these days, there are no in-home flammable forays standing yeah. between you and a bottle of world-class gin, or in my case, a $2 bottle of gin. However, Greg Benson, who's the creator of this drink, would still like to deploy a veritable speakeasy of ingredients in his stiff gin sipper. A time-heavy tea, 
a pear, and hops bitters blend aloe and an herbaceous spritz to complement, not cover up, of course. So here's the drink. Our ingredients are <clears throat> two ounces of gin, half an ounce of aloe vera juice, the drink, not aloe vera. And you should just take some aloe vera. <laughs> just you suck just it down. Grab, <laughs> just grab the plant and munch on it. Um, that was always aloe vera juice. Juice, like the drink. You could buy that like anywhere, like at Publix. Half an ounce of aloe vera. Or for those who don't live in Florida, a grocery store. For my New Englanders, uh, that is uh, Stop and Shop. What's the one with the pig? Pig. Piggly Wiggly. I've never heard of that. That got to be a Midwestern thing. No, nah, it's like Georgia to North Carolina area, I think. Like that. The East Coast. Mid East. Right, so we, we got two ounces of gin, half two, ounce <laughs> of aloe vera juice. Two ounces of gin, half an ounce. Yeah. One quarter ounce of Ruibos. I don't know how to say it. Ruibos. A thyme syrup. Uh, I'm definitely going to need spelling for that. <laughs> R O O I B O S. O I B O what? Yeah, R O O I B O S. All right, I don't yeah, know. I'm gonna go with your pronunciation because I don't. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, either. Ruibos. Uh, two dashes, and then in parentheses it says not drops <laughs> of hopped pear bitters, and then one to two spritzes of rosemary thyme hydrosol. So okay, what's the difference between a spritz, a drop, and a dash? <laughs> Okay, here, here's the thing. A spritz, a spritz has like, an, it's like an actual spray bottle. So that's easy enough. Dashes, I don't fully, I think dashes is like those little, um, like bitters that you get with the little hole at the top and you kind of just have to shake the bottle and it comes out kind of like salad dressing. Okay. You now that, yeah. And then drops is a literal like dropper and you like squeeze it the top and it fills it up and then you drop it into the drink. Science. Okay. Can you yes. <laughs> I could be completely wrong, but that's what I'm guessing. So this is a stirred drink, so you're not going to need a shake or anything, and you're going to be pouring this into a rocks glass. So that's what you'll need for, like, tools. Here's how to make it. You're going to add the gin, aloe, and syrup, and the bitters into a rocks glass with a large ice cube and use a bar, sp bar spoon to stir into the glass feels ice cold. So around 20 to 40 seconds. I did it for about 30, and it was good. Um, for the aromatic finishing touch, you're going to spray the rosemary thyme hydrosol over the top of the drink. And then if you want, as a bonus, if you have a thyme sprig on hand, which I never fucking do. Um, <laughs> and if you want to intensify the herbal aroma, then you can clip the sprig to the side of the glass, uh, which I did not do. But I am drinking it as we speak. Um, and it's fucking good. You heard it here first, folks. Now, I did kind of tweak it a little bit. I added, because it was good, but it was a, just a little too herbal-y for my taste. So I added a little more aloe juice, which the one that Shaker and Spoon provided had honey infused into it. So it was like sweet. So I put a little more into it and then it still there was something missing. So I put a little bit of lemon juice in it. That shit popped off. That shit was good. It's a it's a solid four and a half out of five here on my end. Touche. What do you think? I, I think I'm going to agree. It sounds very, very interesting. It's very refreshing. It just seems like very weird. Like it doesn't seem like it should work, but I think it will for some reason. Let me give you a perfect analogy of what it tastes like. Okay, because when I, when I took a sip, it was very weird. I was like, whoa, this tastes exactly like something. Now, before I put in more aloe and more lemon juice, it tasted very similar to NyQuil, like the liquid. Ew. <laughs> but with the extra aloe vera juice and the lemon juice, it tastes like, you know, those ice pops. They're just like long sticks in the plastic and like you would eat them on like a summer day. And they're like <laughs> sure. purple, blue, red, like all different colors. Uh -huh. It tastes like one of those. I can't pinpoint the, which flavor it is, but it tastes like one of those just a little watered down. So it's very good. Interesting. So I don't know if that changes your your rating at all. No, I'm going to stick to my guns. <laughs> <laughs> which was four and a half, right? Yeah. Awesome. Decent drinks all around then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're back, guys. Sorry, a little... I'm going to put elevator music there. We were discussing podcast business as business mm -hmm. people do. Uh, okay, <laughs> anyways. Um, so, yeah, that's Big Lou's Big Brews and Shaker and Spoons. Shaker and Spoons, Big Shaker and even Bigger Spoon. Sure, Big Shake, Big Spoon. Let's get on with it. <laughs> what? That's an interesting segue. 
let's have you shut up and let me speak. <laughs> yes. So we're going to move on to Beth's question of the day, which every time I say that, I really want to say serving it up Gary's way from SpongeBob. Oh, I don't know that. Or I don't really remember. I'm going to have to. Google it's like he, that was the that was the day where he like lost something and he had to retrace his steps and he kept having to taste the fucking cat or the snail feed over and over and over again. Oh, this is such a 10 second blip in my memory. <laughs> if anyone out there knows that episode, um, sup? <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's it. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Good for you. I'm proud that you remember that because that's in my head almost every single day. All right. Oh, oh, oh you know what? Is Jacob? Sorry. This as we're this is side tangent for everybody. We're all going to go on this ride together. Is <laughs> Jacob there? He is not. Damn it. Never mind. Okay. Why? What do you want from him? I need to. I need you to ask him how often he thinks about the Roman Empire. <laughs> I can text him. Text him right now and ask him how often does he think about the Roman Empire. <laughs> I mean, you could also text him. Yeah, but it has to come from his girlfriend. Is there wants to know how often? No, no, don't say it's for me. Just from you. Oh, just text him. How often do you think how of the Roman, em- Roman Empire? Yeah. Okay. Do and then you no, we'll think? of the roman empire not do you think how often i need to know yeah how. how often do you think of the roman empire okay, okay. all right yeah. okay next also um he already texted back <laughs> oh, <damn. Okay. laughs> he said how often oh i said how often he said bi-weekly bi-weekly okay all right, all right. is that is that a good answer what am i supposed to say back just say thank you <laughs> okay thank you he will not even question it no apparently apparently there's a thing going around the internet that Girlfriends are asking their boyfriends, how often do they think of the Roman Empire? And apparently the number is very high. Um, a lot of guys in relationships, for some reason, just think about the Roman Empire like a lot. Interesting. Oh, let's see if he just texts back. I said, thank you. He said, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no questions. Oh, he's, he's the best. OK, here's your question, Isaiah. Uh-huh. How often do you think of the Roman Empire? <laughs> I don't think of it. Actually, I never thought about it until I saw until I saw that post about a week ago. Well, that's because you're not in a relationship. <laughs> Ladies, he's single. <laughs> Please come and make me think about the Roman Empire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's you. That should be if you ever have a Tinder, that should be your bio. Make me think about the Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah, that would be so funny. Anyways. All right. So here's your question, Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Now, in Rocky 1, obviously we're talking about Rocky 2, but it connects. In Rocky 1. Obviously, there is prize money for the fight. Yeah. And we find out in Rocky 2 just how much Rocky actually made. Now, oh. my question for you is what would be the first thing you'd buy if you were given the 37000 that they stated in the second movie that Rocky gained from his first fight with Apollo? Now, keep in mind this. 37000 back in the 80s or the 70s or whatever. Yeah. Adjusted for inflation. Uh-huh. Okay. So now you can actually picture how much money this is. Is oh. roughly $198,000 today. Ooh. So, what would be the first thing you'd buy with $198,000 before or after taxes? <laughs> this is after taxes. Oh, so I'm getting 198,000 straight. Um yes, because originally Rocky was supposed to make 150,000, but Due to taxes and whatnot, he made it. It was thirty-seven. Okay. So okay, okay. yes, one hundred ninety-eight thousand. Straight even. Um, first thing I'm doing is I'm buying a carport for my house, and then I'm going to sell my car and buy a motorcycle and a Miata. <laughs> what the fuck is a carport? Carport. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a garage, but without walls. I guess I could just buy so a garage. an outdoor garage. Yeah, but because the way my house is set up, you can't get to, you wouldn't be, if I put a garage there, you wouldn't be able to get to my backyard. So I'd rather have a carport. So I'm going to get a carport, a motorcycle, and a Miata, and uh, a Honda Civic Type R. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that, I feel like that's more than the amount of money you're given. What? A carport and a Honda Civic Type R? Yeah. And a, mor- a motorcycle. Okay. Motorcycle, we got eight, six grand. If tops, if that's even if to want to go, because, you know, it'd be like a star motorcycle. So it'd be very, 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 very low. Right. OK. Uh, Honda Civic Type R. If I'm getting like the brand newest one, only about 30K. And I'm not okay. getting it. Nobody gets a 2023 in 2023. That's not how that works. <laughs> I'd probably get a used one it's because that's how cars work. OK. Uh, so it would probably be more like 20K. Right. And then a carport. What I got? That's, that's what? One hundred and fifty thousand dollars I can use to do something with i'm sure i can find a person to build me a carport for less than one hundred fifty thousand dollars. okay all right oh also i gotta 
then uh, the rest of it, I buy stocks and bonds and invest. Mm, like a frat boy you are. Yeah, like a frat. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> a frat, you know, frat house, right? So what, now I'm going to guess what you're going to buy. So what she's going to buy, right, is an apartment. <laughs> and a, I have one. No, no, no. She's going to buy an apartment outright. That way she doesn't got to pay no expenses. She's going to pay off her boyfriend's student loans. And then I don't know what else to actually after that. Yeah, that was kind of going to be my answer was I was going to pay. <laughs> Damn it. The apartment thing, I don't really care about. I can pay for the rent and shit, but like I, I was going to be nice and do that. What a good, <sighs> what a, what a good girlfriend. Hmm? Yeah. Predict the ball. Never let them know your next move. <laughs> yeah. Actually, psych. I would have bought Haley Williams. <laughs> All right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's um, VIP tickets to the, whoever to a concert of uh, Paramore. If there isn't one, she will buy a and make it happen. <laughs> and yeah. then she'll pay off whatever's left student loans. <laughs> Personal concert. Oh, man. Um, OK, so here's my second kind of two parter. So obviously, you know, you ask like, oh, is this before or after taxes? Now, mm-hmm. it, if we're doing the scenario, if it was before taxes, so if Rocky had received the hundred and fifty thousand that he was told he was going to get, that would have been equivalent to roughly 805000 today. $805,000. Yes. Bad. So what would you do with that money? Because that's a lot more. <laughs> that is a lot more. That's a lot yeah. more. Uh, sell my house, move, buy a house with a carport. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then buy the same exact things. And then the rest of the money is just going to go into uh, high interest savings bonds. There's not a single like it doesn't have to be super expensive. You wouldn't buy like, I don't know, a fucking PS5 or some shit like something. I, already own one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm just spitballing like, I don't know. You wouldn't buy something like a little I more minuscule. Do, I, definitely, we call, I definitely quit my job. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, well, I <laughs> already did that. Well, <laughs> hey, so, uh, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, I don't know if you should quit your job. job. Yeah, I think that's a better yeah, idea. I'll find a more laid back job. Yeah, <laughs> that's better because you'll eventually you'll run out of that money pretty quick. But yeah, no, most of it get investment, move, go to a different state, probably. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I would still, I would pay off the his student loans, but with the extra money, I would have, I would probably take like a really good vacation. Like a like a two week long vacation to like Switzerland or some shit, and just like do everything I've ever wanted to do, like skydive and bungee jump and like all that shit. And then with the extra money, because <laughs> I don't think it would be that expensive. Um, maybe yeah, get like a house. You get a pretty decent house we'll for that your, price. You got your little white house. No, sorry, your little cabin house with the white picket fence and your little oh. and on the lakeside. Yes. Now we're talking. I know her so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'd probably get probably get like a, a good little starter home. Not my forever home, but a, a starter home that I could kind of like so we don't have to live in an apartment for the next few years, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that would be nice. I think, so I guess all I got to do is fight the world champion and I'm good. And I can make the yeah. money. <laughs> yes, that's easy enough. Easy enough. And even if I don't win... I could still make a hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars. So I mean, yeah. I'm hearing no cons in this scenario. Well, that is my question of the day, serving it up Gary's way. I think that needs to be my new theme song or whatever segment music. I think you need to find a new day job. <laughs> I think I need to drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaiah, lay down some f- facts. Let's get factual. All right, so. Uh, we have John G. Alvinson. He did not direct this movie. Sylvester Stallone actually directed this one. Uh, mm. John G. Alvinson actually declined to direct this movie because he had he had a schedule with Saturday Night Fever, and so he they oh, were wow. kind of inter- yeah, so it, it just wasn't working out. Stallone wanted to direct the movie, but United Artists were apprehensive until uh, Wrinkler and Chartoff, the producers of the original Rocky, explained how his input on the first movie was so was so good and like very like so on point they're like he's he's got it like they were like we back him up he's got to direct it because mm-hmm. it's he's rocky so that's how he ended up getting the role of being able to direct it so he wrote and direct this movie so wow. Sylvester Stallone. Good now for him the story development of rocky using surprising creed by switching the fighting uh to right-handed was not in the original script it only came about because of an accident on set while getting the shape for film Stallone actually experienced an almost complete tear of his right pectoral pectoralis pectoralis major muscle Ooh, while trying pectoralis. to 
pectoralis, yeah, what she said. Um, while trying to bench a hundred kilograms with bo- bodybuilder Franco Colombo or Colombo Colombo. Jeez. And underwent a partially successful surgery in order to try and reattach the muscle. Therefore, he can he can now he cannot fight with his right hand at the bone at the Dude, time. Tech, teching your pore. Wow. Teching your pore. What? Ripping your pec is no joke. So yeah, when he cut, he just busted that thing out, and then they're like, "Okay, we got to fight a different way." Yeah. Now, Beth, I know this is probably a question you're and you ask you ask yourself when watching this movie because okay. I certainly asked this question myself when I watched this movie. Mm-hmm. How many children did they get for this damn movie to run up the stairs with him <laughs> in Philadelphia? Oh, yeah. Well, the answer is 800. 800? 800 school children were used as extras. There was no way there was that many of them. It was 800. I was like, that's a Holy damn lot of shit. children. It was Dude, 800. Dude, my, my um, spatial awareness is awful then because I thought there was like max 100. Uh, nope, 800. I was like, that's a Jesus. lot of damn children. That is a lot of fucking kids. Now, uh, during the final fight, Stallone and Weathers can be seen taunting each other and being dragged to their corners. Uh, when, in one of those scenes, they were actually mad at each other over some shooting decisions, and a few blows actually got connected. So they were actually fighting, like they oh, were wow. actually pissed off at each other. And so, so they just straight up were like throwing punches. So them being like just like pushed apart was kind of real. Uh, oh wow! For a few of the shots. Now, Sylvester Stallone himself wrote the paperback novelization of this movie. So there is a paperback version of the movie, which Stallone himself wrote. The novel is mostly in first person from Rocky's point of view, written in the same choppy English in which Rocky speaks. Which, That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to read a book like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, it might help you with your dyslexia. I'm not dyslexic. Are you sure about that? <laughs> now, uh, scenes in which Rocky is not present, uh, such as Apollo Creed uh, consulting with associates or Polly alone with Adrian, and those are all ri- written standard third person proper English. There's no issues. But the rest of the book is from Rocky's point of view and is choppy English. Okay. Now, for our final fact, on Friday night with Jonathan Ross in 2001, Sylvester Stallone was asked to give each Rocky score a, a score out of 10. He gave this movie a seven and a half. As What were the other ones? Do you know? I do. And we will get to them when we get to them. Just... Can you tell me the first two or the first one? First one is 10. He gave him a 10 out of 10. So a... Okay. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's so, for Ro- so if Rocky is 10 out of 10 or five out of five, since we're going to convert it, seven and a half is what? Three and a half? Roughly. Yeah, about roughly three and a half. Don't come at us for the math. I, I could be very wrong on that. Um, that was a, a super long list of facts. It felt like a little bit shorter than, uh, definitely shorter than the first movie, but. Yeah. That's yeah. expected. There wasn't a lot. Well, that's okay. I appreciate your facts. Anyways. I tried my best, you know. Um, all right. Well, yeah, thank you for those facts. You are not welcome. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess on that note, let's, uh. Let's discuss the movie. Let's see if we agree with Rocky or not here. Do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, I'll go first. There's not a lot. to. I have not a lot to say about this movie. Ladies first. Unfortunately. Sorry, what did you say? What? What? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I think because Stallone, you know, what's funny is that we were talking about how John G. Alvinson, um, you know, he did Karate Kid, right? Mm-hmm. So when the second movie started and there was like a five minute recap of the first movie, I was thinking, wow. John G. Alvison really likes his like really long recaps. And then I realized Stallone directed his movie. I was like, oh, so he just took a, he just took a bit out of uh, Alvinson's like um, <laughs> book, I guess, because yeah. I was like, wow, this is exactly like something he would do because it's just it was nothing. It was just it was just literally like the last five minutes of the last movie. And I'm like, OK. Um, and then also like just later on, just a casual, just proposing casually. Also, are we not going to talk about the fact that he took her to the zoo? <laughs> From the scene from the last movie, he then took her to the zoo after he got offended about taking her to the zoo. I was like, I thought that was so funny. I was like, what a, all right, that's crazy. Can't believe he did that. But um, yeah. he did it. So there's that. <laughs> I thought that was kind of crazy. However, I think this movie is kind of long and kind of boring, unfortunately. Like 90 minutes worth of a uh, plot could could have been, ha- could have happened in like, I don't know, like 20 minutes. And it just kind of kept going. I was like, oh, why are we still talking yeah. about this? Why are we still doing what's going on? So I don't know. I just felt like a lot of like when when um when Creed's in there, it's pretty good. Like that's what like that's yeah, kind of the, those are the best moments. But so the when show. everything yeah, when everything else is just like, wow, this is kind of dragon. <laughs> oh yeah. I <laughs> agree. Sucks. And I think Mickey is like the best character. He's hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also Polly is just an abusive actor. My God! Yeah, there's really like nothing good about his character. No, I really don't like him. And 
spoiler alert, that doesn't really change for the rest of the movie. Yeah, I was about to say that too. I was like, he kind of is just like a dick. I mean, obviously, I haven't seen right now, I've only seen the first three. Mm. I haven't seen four, five, and six. So there's there's still time for him to redeem himself, but honestly, there's not a lot to redeem. There's very no. got no redeemable characteristics. Yeah. It's really, really yeah. Bad. Uh, yeah. though I do gotta say the fight at this one is very is way more intense. I think like they put a lot more effort into not more effort into this fight, but you can tell that like a lot of the time that they didn't get to do for the first movie, they definitely utilized it way better in this one to be like, yeah, that fight, we're gonna make it as everything that we wanted to do in the first movie, we're gonna do it right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think it definitely I think and I'm kind of jumping the gun here and go into the next episode too, but like I think as the movies progress, the fighting just gets better and better. Yeah. So I gave it a three out of five. I do think it could have been better. This is not my favorite Rocky movie. It's just kind of like, eh. I do think the first one's mildly better. And the aspects that like the problems I had with the first movie didn't really improve. And the problems and the things that it didn't really need improvement got improved way e- even more, mm. which isn't a complaint. It's more of just they should like their focus kind of went on things that were like, oh, that were kind of OK. And they made them great where and then the stuff that was bad, it kind of just stayed bad. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of how like I felt going through this movie. So it's, it's OK. It was it's, it's not the best one. I do think a f- the, uh, there's other Rocky movies. There's like what other six Rocky movies. There's a few others that are way better. Um, uh, so this- <clears throat> spoiler four that I'm very excited to watch. Have you seen four? Not yet. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody shut, have up. You? Everybody shut up. I have seen four. I've seen all these. Okay. Um, yeah. I give it a three out of five. I do think though, someone did say like I was, I was reading, reading letterbox reviews. Someone said the sexual tension between Rocky and Apollo is, uh, is off the scale. And I thought that was Dude. hilarious. <laughs> yes. And in the third one, can we just, we're going to talk about that in the next episode, but oh yeah. Oh, uh, maybe it is. Maybe the third one, maybe the third one is the, it's, you know what? It started oh, the third off one. Here. Those, it started off here and the third one, it took it to the next level. Yeah. Well, um, I think I kind of agree with you on pretty much most of it. Let me just pull up my notes real quick. Um, I think that this, okay, so I, I'm not going to lie. I think the second movie was like so unintentionally funny. Okay. And that's, <laughs> it's purely because of the way Rocky, like just the way Rocky reacts to shit and stuff and the way he talks to people is just, to me, it, it's just really funny. Mm-hmm. And, and same goes for the first one, but like for some reason that it was really pr- present in the second one. And I, it's been a little while since I saw it, like about a week now. So it's kind of hard for me to, I can't give an example at the moment, but um, I also want to say Mickey, I agree the best. He is such like, so, so what a supportive coach just sticking with Rocky through literally all of like the problems he had to face with Adrian quite and everything. Thick and thin, quite literally. Literally. Um, and like the scene where Rocky's like first gets to the hospital and Adrian's in the hospital bed and everything, like not gonna lie, that scene kind of got me to tear up a little bit. Yeah. Just cause like the word, like what he said was so simple, but so like real what he said, you know, he's just like, you're just taking a nap. I was like, Oh uh-huh. my heart. I was like, you're right. She is just taking a nap. Um, so yeah, that got me a little bit. I was also tired, so that might have played a factor into it. <laughs> um, I I just want to point out, like, his son is born and he just like kind of throws it to the side and he's like, I won't see him until she's awake. It's like, dude, the kid could be two years old before she wakes up. Like, what the fuck? You're just going to kind of like abandon this child at birth. Like he doesn't get at either. He gets Polly of all people to take care of him in this time. That's rough. That's really rough. Yeah. That was like my biggest like issue with it. I was like, what the fuck? Um, I also feel like the kids, the 800 kids. Yeah, that was a bit much. <laughs> like running with Rocky. It just felt like cheesy. But, you know, hey, it was 1979. You know, it was a different <laughs> time then. Cheesy was the thing, I guess. Or maybe it wasn't cheesy back then, but now it is. I don't really know, but it's a little weird. Um. I agree that the fight was a bit better, but there were still a lot of hits that just didn't connect. But I think that's just that's just what you're going to get with these movies. Um, And I think also my other biggest issue was Adrian was so adamant about being like him about Rocky not fighting anymore. And then she goes into this coma and she wakes up. She's like, you know what? I had time to think about it. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like what? Right before you slipped into this coma, you were 
being yelled at by Polly and stuff. And you were, you still seemed like you were pretty against it in my opinion, you know? So it was just really weird that she just kind of switched her mind. There wasn't really any like character struggle, like in, internal struggle with it. Um, but it's not that deep, I guess, Bethany. So <laughs> I gave it a three out of five. I, I think it, it's not as good as the first Rocky. I'll agree. Um, but it was an awful, you know, I thought the zoo thing was hilarious, though. I agree. Oh, yeah, the zoo exactly. thing is so funny. In, in the end of it all, it's like, oh, yeah. by the way. Yeah. And I, I did kind of like that, the whole like plot line of him being, you know, more bronze than brain the whole movie. And it's kind of like, yeah, like he didn't grow up with the best education. And so he can't read a book perfectly or he can't, you know, say his lines right and stuff like that. And I kind of liked that because it was kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's that's a good little. It didn't feel like if this, this for a sequel, it didn't feel unnecessary. It felt like a good sequel. And a lot of sequels, it's like you can tell with a lot of sequels, they're just making it to make money. And this didn't feel like that. But do you agree? I agree. It's something very important to that. A sequel doesn't feel like it's a money grab. Yeah, that's hard to come by nowadays. Um, OK, well, uh, do you have anything else you want to add? No, nah, that's it. Nothing else. All right. Well, then, thank you, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Uh, Please be sure to send in your movie suggestions for our upcoming listeners episode. It is going to be Halloween themed. So you have until the week before Halloween to submit your movies, please. I want only the best of the best or the worst of the worst. So I guess literally anything. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're not already, please be sure to also follow us on Instagram for any and all updates regarding episodes, future guests and whatnot. And we will see you all next week with Rocky 3. Adrian! Are you going to do that every episode? Yes. Yes, I am.